Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week we are going to service, upgrade, and totally pimp out my Amiga 500. But of course first, we're gonna need to make ourselves a drink. For this week's drink, we're gonna be making a mojito. So first of all, we're gonna start off with 10 mint leaves and put them in a sturdy glass. And sturdy glass is key here. Then we're gonna take half a lemon and cut it into four wedges. We're gonna take one of those wedges and put it in with the mint leaves. Then we're gonna use a muddler to muddle the leaves and the lime wedge. Next, we're gonna add two more wedges and two tablespoons of granulated sugar. And then we're gonna muddle that. Now we're gonna fill this glass almost to the top with crushed ice. Then we're gonna add one and a half ounces of white rum. Then we're gonna add half a cup of carbonated water or club soda. And we add our lime wedge as our garnish. And there we have a mojito. Cheers. Mmm. Minty and delicious. All right, let's get to it. If you watched my I Finally Got an Amiga episode, you'll know that I'm pretty new to the Amiga and this is the only one that I have and I really haven't had a chance to do a lot with it because the enter key doesn't quite work on it. So um, I've been accumulating upgrades and things to do to it and uh, gonna try to do them all in this one episode. And it might be too much for this one episode and maybe it'll be split into two. But uh, what my goal is, is to, first of all, replace the keyboard membrane. So I got this one here from Retro Hacks, um, which should hopefully fix my enter key issue. Um, while I'm at it, I got this recap kit from Retro Rewind. So I'm gonna go ahead and recap it. So those two should take care of uh, any of the issues that I'm actually having with the machine. Uh, I also got an upgraded power supply. So it's just newer. So that's just nice to have. Um, so I'll be using that. Uh, and then as far as upgrades to the machine, I have two main ones that I'm gonna do. And one is this Go X floppy emulator from Centurion, uh, Centurion Tech, I believe. Yeah, Centurion Tech. Um, and I like, I, I chose this one just because I haven't used this one before uh, and I thought it'd be fun, but also it's very uh, Amiga centric um, because it has this little screen that like pops right here, which is pretty awesome. And so I'm pretty excited to, to try that one out over, you know, using the GoTech. Um, and then uh, as, a, as a final upgrade, uh, because I don't really have great, um, uh, composite monitors. And so I got this uh, Amiga Denise chip RGB to HDMI adapter, which should allow us to use a Raspberry Pi to, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, to get HDMI output from the Amiga and allow me to, to do a lot more with it. So um, I'm not upgrading the processor. I'm not adding a hard drive because I want it to still kind of work uh, like an Amiga of this era. Um, and I know with all the hard drive upgrades, at least for the 500, all involve um, processor upgrades and, and things like that. And I kind of want to stay pretty stock to what it is. And so that's why I'll be relying mostly on this GoX uh, to use floppy images to boot to it, just like you would have if you had the Amiga 500 back in the day. So yeah, if I want to if I want to do something that involves a hard drive and, and a later version of Workbench, I'll probably do that on a different machine. Um, I, you know, I still might tinker with this one and maybe make it have a switchable workbench or, or you know, things like that. But, but for right now, this is what I'm doing. I'm pimping this out. I'm upgrading uh, the, the caps on the motherboard, new membrane, swapping out the floppy and adding HDMI output. So hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully I can get to all of it in this episode. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, Let's get started. All right, I got the Amiga here on my workbench and uh, to get any of this work done, I'm gonna have to go ahead and open it up. So let's get started. I'm just gonna remove these six T10 screws around the case. And while we're here, let's go ahead and take off the trap door and the side door here. And as I remove the top cover here, I can just checking and you can see that it's very 
much not yellowed. Uh, the inside and the outside are the same color, so that's pretty great. And then I'm gonna remove this keyboard by first removing the ground wire here, and then just pulling the keyboard cable out. And now to get rid of this RF shield, we just need to remove four more T10 screws. The RAM expansion is attached to this uh, socketed circuit board, and so I'm using my IC puller to just pop that out of the socket. And then we can just slide out the RAM expansion. I'll remove the floppy drive by pulling out the power and ribbon cables and then removing the three screws that hold it in place. Voila! And since I'm recapping this motherboard, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these hex screws so that we can take off the RF shield that it sits on. And now we have a bare Amiga 500 motherboard ready for recapping. When I recap a motherboard, I pretty much do the same process on repeat. So the first thing I do is I locate the capacitor and then flip it over and locate where the pins are coming out of the back of the motherboard. I then use my desoldering gun to remove the solder so that I can easily remove that capacitor. Once it's removed, I check the values against the capacitors in the capacitor kit, find one of the same value. I then put the legs of the new capacitor through the holes. The long leg is positive and the stripe is on the negative side. Once the legs are through, I bend one of the legs slightly just so it stays in place before I have a chance to solder it. The loose capacitor tells me that it's the new one and it's going to be soldered later, and so that keeps track of where I am on the motherboard whenever I'm doing the capacitor replacement. Overall, pulling all these capacitors out on this motherboard was a little frustrating. Every capacitor had one leg that wouldn't fully desolder, and so uh, I had to use a combination of solder braid or flowing new solder or adding solder, then desoldering again, sometimes two or three times. Uh, so it, it took a while, but eventually uh, got all the capacitors out. Luckily for me, the soldering went pretty smoothly. Now we'll just do that 30 more times. Snip off all the legs. And then clean it with isopropyl alcohol. And now we have a nice, freshly recapped Amiga 500 motherboard. And we'll just put this back together so that we can do a quick test and see if the recap worked. This is definitely real time. I'm that fast. Okay, so gone ahead and recapped and I want to test to make sure that this works before I go any further so but pop okay I'll turn it on and I don't have a floppy connected so yeah we just get the workbench screen but that looks awesome that's great cool now I'm gonna proceed to uh, do the film here on the keyboard so that I can get that enter key working um, and maybe get the GoX installed. So, hey, let's keep going.
So to replace the keyboard membrane, we just have to take this backing plate off of the keyboard, and that just involves unscrewing the 300,000 screws they decided to put in this plate. Now we can just remove this metal plate and we'll have access to the keyboard membrane. Replacing the actual membrane is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use a spooger to unlock this little beige connector and that will release the film. and then I can replace it with the new one. Now before I put all four million screws back in, I'm just gonna go ahead and set the plate here to the keyboard and put a couple screws in just so I can test it to make sure that everything works before I put all the screws back in. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug the keyboard into the motherboard. And so that I can test the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and plug the floppy drive back in with a copy of Workbench in the floppy drive so I have an application that I can use to test the keyboard. Unfortunately, I didn't get a great angle of the screen when testing the keyboard, but the return key still does not work. What's more, the place that I ordered it from said that the US and the UK keyboard membranes were the same, um, but they're not the same because uh, the UK membrane actually switches <laughs> all the keyboard keys to the UK layout. So none of the keys are where they're supposed to be for, for my US keyboard. Um, so I guess, since it doesn't work on this as well, I'm just going to switch back to the original membrane because at least it's in the US layout. So because we know it's not the membrane, I went ahead and started trying a whole bunch of different things to figure out why the return key was not working. First was I just pulled the key out, cleaned it, and resat it. Then I tried applying this conductive paint to the plunger. I tried switching plungers with other ones, and that did not work. And I also um, tried just a plunger or a stem on its own, just hitting the membrane, and that did work, but uh, once it was all put back together, it didn't work. So I'm afraid the broken return key will not be fixed in this repair video, but we can at least move on to the other upgrades. The install of the GoX should be pretty straightforward. The nice thing about this device is it already has a mounting plate that has screw holes that line up exactly where the screw holes were for the floppy drive. So again, should be pretty straightforward. Easy. Three screws, two cables, and we're done. I just have to add the OLED screen later whenever I put the case back together, but that'll do for now. The Amiga Denise Chip RGB to HDMI adapter is really just a Raspberry Pi hat that sits between the Denise Chip slot and the Denise Chip, allowing the Amiga to send its video output through the Raspberry Pi and out of the HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi. So for this project, we're gonna go ahead and use a Raspberry Pi Zero, but first we're gonna have to solder on some pin headers so that we can even attach it to this hat. It's 
probably a reason you're not supposed to do it this way, but I went ahead and put the pins into the RGB to HDMI adapter so that they're where I want them to be. And then I set the Raspberry Pi on top of that so that it holds it in place a little better so it makes it easier to solder the pins on. And now you can see my not great soldering work, but it works. And uh, we'll just get this cleaned up and uh, get it plugged into the Amiga. In order for the RGB to HDMI adapter to work, you need to download this zip file from the GitHub page, which I will link below. Then we'll just unzip it, format our micro SD card as FAT32, and drop the contents of this folder at the root of the SD card. Now to install this, we're just going to have to remove our Denise chip and put it into the RGB to HDMI adapter and then plug our Raspberry Pi into the RGB to HDMI adapter. And then we'll put the whole thing into the Denise socket on the motherboard. Now to put it all back together, I'm going to run this ribbon cable from the HDMI out port on the Raspberry Pi and uh, to a little HDMI breakout port, which will sit on the outside of this Amiga. And then I need to run the wires from the OLED screen for the GoX through a vent port and attach them to the GoX on the inside as well. They're a bit of a tight fit, so I use a spooger to force it through. Finally, we'll get our still return key not working, but fully reassembled keyboard plugged in as well. All right, we're here. We've got everything back together and we're ready to test this guy out. Um, we have the RGB to HDMI adapter with the little ribbon cable coming out of this little slot here. Um, there's a 3D printed part that you can actually add to this, which uh, I don't have a 3D printer, so I haven't done that yet, but I plan to in the near future, just so it kind of blends in with the case a little better. You can see we've got the OLED screen for the, the um, GoX over here. And, uh, and of course the little SD card with a bunch of disc images on it. And so, nothing too big, 8 gigabyte. And a uh, new power supply. Of course, the recap worked. Everything uh, is great. It's going to give us longer life and not risk uh, the motherboard frying. Um, and yeah, so uh, I guess let's just go ahead and test it out. Uh, got the new power supply down here, so we're going to flip it on and we'll see what we get. And so I've gone ahead and selected the workbench can see it tells us our resolution and what it's doing and that's on the RGB to HDMI adapter and then we're just gonna boot right up and it looks like everything's working which is awesome of course uh, it's unaccelerated so <laughs> our boot time is going to be just the same as always um, which is, you know, slow-ish, but that's what I'm going for. I really want to learn the Amiga, and I thought it was best to kind of start with an earlier OS and understand what is there, and then work my way up to newer OSs and new features, because um, I've tried some newer ones on emulators, and it just confuses me. And so that's why I'm starting pretty simple here. That's also why I'm starting without a hard drive, just kind of booting into things. Um, but here, we can go ahead and see here that everything appears to be working. We've got our GoX that launched Workbench, and then I have my Extras floppy in the, in the floppy drive. So you can see both of those 
work. And we can hear the little, little speaker on the Go X making sounds. And of course we can hear the actual motor of the uh, floppy drive. So um, the one thing, the reason that I was so excited about doing the Amiga is that Sierra games from the late 80s on the Amiga always had a really good soundtrack or at least a soundtrack versus the PC speaker version. Um, and so I'm excited to kind of listen to those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look at some of the Sierra games of the late uh, 80s that would have a better sound on the Amiga. And, uh, and I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, but yeah, let me uh, get the camera set up and, uh, and we'll switch to that now. All right, I think that does it for this Amiga upgrade episode. I'm gonna continue to search to figure out how I can make this uh, return key work. Um, and again, other than that, I think, I think this is how this machine's probably gonna stay. Um, I might get a, a, a floppy boot selector so that I can boot from the actual floppy, the external versus uh, the Go X. Um, but other than that, I can't really, um, see what else I would do with it. Um, but for right now, um, I need to do my exploring. I don't know what's good on the Amiga, so tell me. Write it in the comments. Tell me things I should try out, things that are fun, things that are cool that you can do with the Amiga. But anyway, it's just nice that it's a lot easier to get software onto with the, uh, the Go X, and it's great that I can see it using this incredible um, RGB to HDMI adapter. I just, it's just amazing what you can do with a Raspberry Pi. Um, these are really, really impressive. And, um, I love that I don't have to ship big, heavy Amiga monitor to try to get that here. So, um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing and, uh, I'll see you next time.